Hey guys, welcome to the show. I'm your host, Scott Bond. Imagine this scenario. You're searching for your dream home, but before you can even start browsing listings, there's a crucial step that you can't afford to overlook. We're talking about the importance of ultimately finding a real estate agent right before your property search even begins. Our guest today is Mohab Samak, the Managing Director of Engel & Volkers. Mohab, welcome to the show. First, I would like to say thank you so much for having me here. It's a pleasure and a little bit of a break for us, to be honest, to be sitting with someone and having a chat about the business that we work in. And um, I thank the team, obviously, for having me and the effort behind it. Tell us your background. How did you get into real estate and how did you achieve the success that you've achieved? Um, I'm very grateful for it, to be honest with you. And I think about it a lot. It's a lot of hard work and experience. And I'm very grateful for the opportunities I've had, bad and good. And uh, it's just, again, it's that dedication to keep going. I've been here since 2005. I've started as a junior agent and assistant agent and moved up the ladder and got very good choices when it came to choosing my future employer. Um, always been corporate. I've always been on the consultancy side, um, mainly developer, uh, sorry, mainly um, uh, on the brokerage side, but I've decided to try on the developer side and jumped into AMR. And from there, I stayed there for a bit and then jumped back into brokerage through Hamptons, the real estate arm. And then through that, uh, another opportunity came and we started at a little agency. But then I've um, moved on to find England Volkers. I've joined their operations for the last four years. So it's been a, a I would say, the, the only thing that I would say, how did I reach here? A lot of dedication, belief in my own skills and what I can do. Um, don't listen to people, just keep going. Um, just that's it, perseverance. Um, don't give up, keep persevering until you get there. Yeah, I gotta imagine the mindset is really important to achieve success in this business, especially if you think about the cycles you've been through of good times and bad times and, you know, repeat. How do you continue to achieve those results though? You know, what is that mindset that you have that makes you successful? Um, I summarize it in a few, few words. Uh, I would say, um, I uh, want to leave a mark somewhat, if you want to think about it. It's just having to do things that um, I know it's better than what I did like yesterday and keep going that um, knowing, I mean, I'm very spiritual by, by nature. So when I think about these things, I think about it a little bit deeper. Um, I, I do believe that I need to live on a little bit of an edge. Um, you always have to push that. Obviously, keeping the, the, the hunger held back by ethics and by ethos and by how I you know, present myself to people I meet. Um, so from there, it just keeps building up and you just keep running and you have to be better than yesterday. And if you try something and it doesn't work, it's fine. You're learning, take the lesson and move on. The next one has to be bigger. And the next lesson that you will learn, meaning that the hardships that you, you will go through, it will probably be bigger because you're getting bigger. And that's how it keeps going. And I don't think that would ever stop. It is the test that we're going through. And I take it from the other side of the, the story. It's not the peacefulness. There is peacefulness, obviously. But you have to also do it with that hunger that you need to be better than you were before. And going along, you meet people and you try that and you instill that in them. And they see that this is your ethos and this is how you work and this is how you build a team. This is how you build the company. Is that people that have one target, one direction is to keep getting better than they were the day before. I don't look at competitions. I don't think about it. I look at them and I clap at them. They're mostly my, my friends, but they're on their own journey. It's a different on this side. Yeah. We also talked on that too about uh, this is such a people business. And so you think about, you know, the experiences, the resiliency, the adaptability, uh, you know, the desire, all these things that go into being successful in this business is, you know, th those words we've mentioned. But how important is it to be a people person and to really understand and know people and their needs in this industry? Uh, to have a smile on your face all the time. Let's start <laughs> from there. Um, just. It comes in, it's, an, it's a human nature as well. So you can't really tell someone that is not very comfortable with to opening up to people and their job doesn't need them to do that, to do that. But I'm in the sales industry and I was, I mean, uh, as far as I can remember, I think when I was younger, I was a little bit more conservative. I didn't like to talk. Uh, I didn't like to be in big groups and I don't know how I got into sales, but I really liked it and I, I gained the skills. And it comes from self-confidence and knowledge, by the way. I wouldn't say people's skills is coming from 
you know what you're talking about mm. and you want to actually connect with people. And when you have those boundaries, it's like, it's okay. You can be nice and friendly to everybody, but not everybody's your friend as well because you have to have that balance. Mm. And you keep that niceness to you. You do good by people, even if they do wrong. And as you go on year after year after year, you will then be remembered that that guy that everybody wants to talk to and ask for help and be there for them. And you that you will be there for them too. And yeah, it just keeps going. It's a big cycle. It's Again, it's humans' relations. It's not a couple of years. It's not a plan. It's a style. It's yeah. a, a way of living. Well, and you're also talking about the consultancy side of it to some degree, Obviously. right? And you even mentioned that word earlier. Uh, when we think about going to find a good real estate agent, what are some of those qualities that I would be looking for? I imagine, you know, the consultant is one of them, but tell me what are those four or five qualities I should be really thinking about? No, I, I don't have an exact like countdown, <laughs> but <laughs> as it comes to You don't have a head, list one through five and those, those I only? I will go through as much <laughs> as I remember from the qualities that I personally, so yeah. this is my personal opinion Please. and how I consider a good agent. Um, by far, number one is ethics is how the agent conduct themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, ethics and discipline shows a lot. And if you see all the top agents, and I'm not talking about waking up early, I'm talking about discipline, mm -hmm. uh, perseverance, like they don't give up. Um, so I believe that is the first thing you need to see in an agent. The second thing is knowledge. I mean, I can, uh, saying it right there, I think we should put knowledge number one. You know what I mean? It's just, yeah. um, knowledge is extremely important and that will give you a big part of that confidence that you speak to your clients from. Um, an agent must have a consultancy background, as in his head is not how much more commission I can make. Or if I sell this, I can make more money on that side. Whatever it is that happens in the market that we're in. I wouldn't. I mean, I don't frown upon it. It's, it's their way of doing the business, but I wouldn't. And when I look at that, I deal with my client as a consultant. Client will come to me, I will understand his conditions, and I will understand what he needs in order for me to give him what he wants. And what he wants is what's good for him, not for me. And I think this is why I've thrived in the market so far, because I've played it that way and that side. Um, and it gives you that professionality to you. You're a professional agent. And, and that's why I, I pride myself on my agents. It's always the case. I always tell them, you need to be a consultant. If it's not good for your client, even if you're going to make 20% commission, you should not care, because that client is... Uh, for you, there's an energy exchange. And if you give them negative, the negative will come back to you. Yeah. Don't do that. Keep building yourself and it will be okay. So, Especially in a small market too, yes. right? You know, uh, at the end of the day, you want to build a career. If you want to be here for the long haul, you definitely want to have that name that everybody's going to want to align to and, and understand. With that being said, if I'm a consumer and I'm thinking about buying or selling a property, how important is it for me to start with the agent first, uh, early in that journey? Um, we, it, the profession is, came from, from, again, the consultancy side. Mm -hmm. So when real estate started to happen and the people, population in cities started to increase and people needed houses and it, the cities became bigger, people needed someone that only works and lives and breathes real estate. Someone that will be able to give me all that. So as a customer coming in, in order for you to make the right decision, don't be fooled that you'll be able to do that yourself. The market is too big, it's, it's Dubai for God's sake. So we've got amazing amount of property, amazing amount of uh, product that is available for all different sorts and they all have cross-selling capacity as well. So how would you be able to study that and make the best decision? So choosing your agent it is gonna save you a lot of time because I will consider you a smart client and you can probably do that homework yourself, mm -hmm. but it will take you as long as it takes an agent to start to have the part of knowledge, which is nine to 12 months. So, and then all of that just for you to decide on an investment, I'm not sure that that is the feasible thing. It's the same thing as going to a lawyer. It's the same thing as going to a doctor. This is a profession that services a basic need for human beings. So I think that, answers at all. Yeah, no, for sure. And I, I also think though about all the different options that we have in Dubai, all the different communities. Do I want to live in a villa? Do I want to live in a penthouse? Do I want to live on the Palm Beach? Do I want to be yeah. further inland? I have to imagine an agent is there to help me really narrow that in and make that decision, right? 
Yes? And the agent needs to sit with you and understand what do you actually want. Are you going for investment? Do you want to live in it, in it at one point? Do you need a school next to it? Do you need uh, to have a swimming pool? Do you need to have a, a gym? Uh, what sort of sports activities do you like to do? Yeah. But all these things are the ingredients of all that. And the agents, if he does not understand your situation, understand your financial capacity, and what is your interest in f from that purchase that you're about to make, he will not be able to make the right decision. Yeah. So you will need to give that to the agent and trust him to be able to do that. But trust is a major factor because we've got a, a huge amount of agencies and agents in Dubai at the moment. Um, it, it's nice, it's amazing to have competition because you start to see how people act and how people uh, benefit. And I learn from my competition all the time. I always look at what they do and I see what they, what's being done right. And we follow the market trends and all that. We all do that. How, how about technology? How is this playing today in the agent landscape? So if I'm thinking about picking an agent, you, you mentioned these things like ethics and trust and uh, knowledge, but what about the technology they have access to and maybe how are people separating themselves with it? Um, I'll come to the separation and how we're using it. But again, I started in Dubai when there was no um, RERA, um, where our <laughs> advertisement used to go out in newspapers uh, and there was usually fully booked and it's even bigger than the actual newspaper itself. This is how much it was being used back in the day. And to see the amount of tech advancements and uh, peripheral systems that we're using in addition to our main systems um, is unbelievable sometimes. It's just, it, it takes you like, oh, am I that old? <laughs> it's just the first question that comes up. By the way, I mentioned the word CD-ROM to somebody the other day and they <laughs> went, what? And then, then I went down to a whole thing about floppy disks and three by fives and I really dated myself. So, you know, yeah. I know, I know. Oh, this is what I'm saying. So, so to see what we can offer now, it's got, it's a, it's a sword with two sides that can hurt you really badly. The first side is um, we've got all these facilities for us to do a lot more effort because it reduces time constraint. Mm. And that makes you put more money into things that you can actually put more time into actually we can make money out of. And it's great. You can use the full, full potential of your stuff. The bad side of it um, is that I do believe that it, it gives the ease of business. Like I see some... Agents sometimes coming and talking to me, I'm talking in general, I'm just, you know, uh, venting, if you want to say it. Uh, some of the agents will come to us and uh, be like, oh, I'm not getting leads, or why is this happening, or why is that not happening, why is my listings not getting... Um, but I was like, we never had these things back in the day. We used to knock on doors, walk on the streets in the heat. I know it's hot, I've been living here for a while. And we used to get tired and have sleepless nights and... Standing queues for developers, it was a lot worse than now. And we made it. So just trust yourself a little bit more and you can make it. With all the advancements that we have, any agent that hasn't been achieving the status of super agent, for instance, mm -hmm. I think is making a mistake. He needs to either consider his effort levels or consider the business altogether. Yeah. Think about it that way. Because if you're not going to do this the right way, then why are you doing it? Right. Just go and do what you want to do right. Yeah, as opposed to a lot of people get into this business just for the cash grab or they see it as an easy way to make money, and which is we see a lot of new agents come to town at this point in time, which I have to imagine makes it even tougher from a competitive standpoint uh, you know, to stand out and to, to, you know, to do the right thing. But if you're doing the right thing over time, you're going to get that business in, in return, I imagine. Yeah. I, and another thing and advice I always tell the agents is like, trust me, the money you will make, you will spend anyway. So, Moab, it can be quite intimidating when you're on a portal like Property Finder and you're looking at all these amazing listings. You see all these agents that are out there as well. Where should I think about starting if I'm a consumer, if I want to buy or rent a property? Um, do you want my professional answer, right? I in do. Full. That's right. Yes. We're I in front of the charge, fireplace. I charge for this, though. Well, you know, we'll get it free today. <laughs> okay. And then, you know. <laughs> okay. So the first thing you need to understand is you. So you need to actually know what you want, what you're looking for. What's your budget? How much money can you afford? Do you need a down payment? If it's rent, can you give it? How many checks can you pay on? Mm. All these things you need to figure out before you approach anybody. Because if you don't, you'll approach an agent, he, you don't know what he what you want. He wouldn't be able to help you accordingly or she. Um, 
you, you need to understand what you want first. And then you, you need to choose your agent. So you look in the pro, don't look. Don't, if you're going to hire an agent, don't go out there and look yourself. Mm -hmm. The Dubai market is too big. It's too um, diversified. Yeah. You've got all types and all shapes of properties everywhere. So it will not be the best for you to do that. Unless you've been living here, you know the area, and you can at least, you know, zoom into one area that you like or a couple of areas. Yep. But other than that, you need to approach your agent first. You need to choose the agent carefully with the things that we've discussed before. Integrity, knowledge, good name, have good reviews from his clients. And you go and meet that agent and tell them, I don't know what I'm doing. Please consult me where I should go. You give them what you know about yourself. What's your future plans? Why are you choosing this area? Or why do you like a villa? Why is it better for you to have something, uh, a three bedroom with a maid? In order for them to understand what can fit you and what cannot. Because he might show you something or she might show you something that you don't consider good for yourself. But because he now understands and he knows the market, coupled with the market knowledge that he has, that's it for you. You've got the right ingredient. Um, I love agents that we get sometimes and even try and negotiate the commissions. That's a different story altogether. <laughs> But in these cases, when these things happen, I always tell the client, and I usually refuse to do that. I'm like, I'm really sorry. Do you want full service? Or do you want like a couple of items on the... <laughs> you want the full meal or not? Yeah. yeah. Uh, do you want price with that? <laughs> right. yeah. so, so that is the idea. So I, I, I would recommend these steps exactly. Amazing. No, this is, uh, this is super helpful. Yes. And, uh, you know, as people think about finding a really good agent, you've given us some great tips today in terms of trust, you know, find somebody who's ethical, find somebody who is going to ultimately be that consultant for you. And I think you help boil it down a little bit to reduce a little bit of what could be the intimidation of finding a really good agent here in Dubai. So Moab, I just want to thank you again for joining us today. It's been wonderful to get your knowledge and insights. And uh, anybody that's working with you or your team is going to be in good hands. It's obvious. Thank you so much. And uh, hopefully you'll see you soon. Perfect. Thank yes. you. Thank you.